Hi guys, Ed from Medics Money here. If you've ever wondered, at a simple level, how income tax is calculated, why the tax year end in the UK is the 5th of April, and what sources of income are tax free, then stick around and don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons. So let's start with some essential tax knowledge regarding income tax. The important stuff you need to know to be able to follow the rest of what we talk about, both today and for future videos. So firstly, the tax year in the UK that runs from the 6th of April each year until the 5th of April the following year. So at the current time I'm recording this we are in the tax year that runs from the 5th of April 2023 until the 6th of April 2024 or the 2023 to 2024 tax year. And the government will set tax rates and thresholds for each tax year in their budget which is usually in the spring uh, and also their autumn statement, which this year was in November, just recently. If they decide to increase or decrease a tax, such as income tax, then usually the change will take effect from the start of the next tax year, that is the 6th of April. So why do we have such a strange tax year end? Why isn't it the 31st of December, as it is in many countries around the world? Well, it's because originally the British used what was known as the Julian calendar rather than the Gregorian calendar, which many European countries had already moved to. So the Julian calendar resolved around important religious days, but the most important being on the 25th of, the cert of certain months, usually every quarter, there'd be a very important holy day. So Christmas Day being the 25th of December, that is the, the classic one, of course. March in the Julian calendar was always the first month of the year and New Year's Day was actually the 25th of March. By the time we, we switched over to the Gregorian calendar um, a long time ago now in 1752 we were actually 11 days out from the rest of Europe which meant that the British um, when we changed to the Gregorian calendar we basically went from September the 2nd one day to September the 14th the next. Now the treasury they weren't too happy about losing 11 days worth of revenue so to still make sure that they got one whole year's worth of revenue the tax year was extended to the 4th of april uh, and then later on by one more day to account for leap years which took us to the 5th of april as our tax year end and it's been the same ever since basically okay so a bit of history there for you guys hope you found that interesting but back to the uh, more useful stuff back to what is income tax and how is it applied. So firstly, most people in the UK will get a tax-free personal allowance of £12,570. So the first £12,570 of income should be tax-free. Now, the personal allowance begins to be taken away if your adjusted net income exceeds £100,000. So we're not going to discuss that further here, but make a mental note of this number because this will be important when we discuss tax codes in a separate video and also when we discuss a key concept called marginal rates when you're, the tax rate on one pound of income that you get or one extra pound of income you get is different to the actual legal tax rate. Once your personal allowance has been taken off to get your taxable income, you then start applying the tax rates to the tax thresholds. Now, looking at non-savings income only, which includes most the most important sources of income, so that includes salaries, the taxable profits of self-employed people, partnership income, and rental income, uh, you can see the tax thresholds and tax rates on the right here for England, Wales, and Northern Ireland. And don't worry, we'll come to Scotland separately. Once you've deducted the personal allowance, £12,570, the next 37 thousand seven hundred pounds is taxed at 20 percent and then the next 87 440 pounds of income is taxed at 40 taxed at 40 percent income above 125,140 pounds is taxed at the additional higher rate of 45 percent as i say these are the the rates for non-savings income so we're not considering for example a dividend income which is taxed slightly differently and we're only looking here at income tax of course there are other taxes out there, corporation tax, VAT, capital gains tax, and so on. But just looking at income tax and non-savings non income. Okay. 
HM Revenue and Customs, I'm sure you all, all heard of HMRC, they are responsible for collecting taxation throughout the UK. So what about Scotland? So all the rates that you see here on the right, these apply to England, Wales and Northern Ireland. So what about Scotland? Well, for Scotland, the non-savings rates are different. So in Scotland, you have five rates. You have 19%, 20%, 21%, 42%, and 47% currently, okay? And I'm not gonna read them all out for you, but you can see on the on the right um, how the thresholds apply to Scotland. So slightly more, well, there are more thresholds, there are more rates, slightly, slightly more detailed calculations when you want to calculate your income tax, but it applies the same principle, which we're gonna come on to towards the end. Note that the personal allowance, um, 12,570 pounds, that is the same um, as the rest, of the rest of the UK in Scotland because that is set by the UK government. So everyone in the UK, no matter where you are, as long as you're eligible for it, will get a personal allowance, a tax free amount of £12,570. We mentioned that there are some things that are <clears throat> exempt from income tax. Um, there isn't a, it's not the biggest list in the world. Funnily enough, HMRC do want to get their hands on, on what they can. Um, but there are some key things that are exempt okay now the first thing possibly the most important one is that the any income generated in an individual savings account or ISA that is tax free okay so if you're earning bank interest on in a cash ISA or bank interest in in a lifetime ISA or even dividend income as well by the way for ISAs I know we haven't talked about dividend tax rates but any income bank interest or dividends that you receive in an ISA that is exempt from income tax if you buy premium bonds and you make some and you win some money from that that those winnings are also tax free um, and you can buy up to fifty thousand pounds of premium bonds they're quite handy because you can cash them in at any time and get your money back um, and as i say if you if you win on the premium bonds it's basically a form of a savings account but with a, a lottery rather than an actual fixed interest um, if you win that income is tax free if you win any income from betting, gaming or lotteries, such as the National Lottery, for example, if you win money there, there is no income tax payable. Certain social security benefits are also exempt from income tax. They would include universal credit, housing benefit and child benefit. Um, but you have to be aware or be a bit, bit careful of child benefit because um, there is something called the high income child benefit charge if your income goes above £50,000 or if the income of your partner goes above £50,000, the government will start to claw that money back or make you repay it. Um, and by the time you reach an income of over £60,000 for you or your partner, you have to pay the whole amount. Um, the next couple may not be that important for doctors, but scholarship awards are exempt from income tax. Dividends paid on the first £200,000 of Venture Capital Trust or VCT shares are exempt. That um, well, I'll be very impressed if anyone out there has enough venture capital trust shares that they receive near, you know, £200,000 of dividends, but hey, I'm sure there are some people out there that, that do. Um, and if you do, if you're lucky enough, that is exempt from income tax. Termination payments, there are various rules around that, but if you are maybe, maybe redundant um, and you, the rules, you're, you know, you meet the, the rules that apply for that, you can get up to £30,000 of tax-free income. Again, may not be that applicable for healthcare professionals because we are less likely to be made redundant given how desperate the NHS is for staff, but it might apply to your, your loved ones. This is a little bit more interesting for doctors given how often we are relocated to different trusts or different parts of the country. You can claim up to £8,000 of relocation expenses and get that income tax-free. I think many NHS, NHS trusts will actually pay up to £10,000 and as I say £8,000 of that should be exempt from income tax. So you can see there aren't a, a vast number of sources of income that are exempt. Um, don't forget that the first £12,570 is tax free for most individuals. Something I should also mention here is that the first £1,000 of trading income and the first £1,000 of rental income they are also not so much exempt, but there is a £1,000 allowance, kind of like an additional personal allowance, which takes the first £1,000 out of tax. So if you um, 
you know, if you, let's say you're you're constantly trading on eBay and you're actually making a, a, a decent profit on that, up to a thousand pounds, then that is exempt from income tax, or rather, it's covered by this one thousand pound trading allowance. That can be really important for doctors because if you're getting any income from completing cremation, um, cremation form income is classified as miscellaneous income, and miscellaneous income also randomly qualifies for this one thousand pound trading allowance so if you receive um checks from various funeral directors for filling in cremation forms and you get i don't know 200 pounds 300 pounds whatever it is you get as long as it's below 1000 pounds you don't have to pay tax and you don't have to even tell hmrc or put it on your tax return or do a tax return sorry um so pretty handy okay calculating income tax now this is something that i think a lot of people are going to assume is is incredibly difficult now it's not actually too difficult to work out your income tax um the main difficulty is working out you know making sure you get the right amounts that are taxed okay but the key thing to say is that it's not that difficult and i'm going to show you a, a very simple example okay right now we're just going to imagine that someone gets paid a gross salary of sixty thousand pounds okay and that's it we're not going to look at any deductions we're not going to look at any other types of income we're not going to look at this person doesn't have bank interest or dividend income or anything else going on okay and we're just going to look at what the income tax liability is okay now for the countries of the uk apart from scotland what you do to work out your income tax liability is you take your gross salary of sixty thousand pounds you then deduct your personal allowance, assuming you're eligible for it, but in this case, this person is. So you deduct £12,570, and that gives you a taxable income of £47,430. Okay. And then you apply the rates that we mentioned. So we've already said the first £37,700 is taxed at 20%. So that is then a tax liability of £7,540. And then the excess, because we haven't gone above 125,140 pounds, we're not at the 45% limit yet. So the next chunk of income, the remainder of it is taxed at 40%, given a tax bill of 3,892 for that element, and a total tax liability of 11,432 pounds. Scotland is exactly the same process, okay? So <clears throat> you've got your gross salary of 60,000 pounds, Again, in Scotland, the personal allowance is always the same. So £12,570 is deducted, yielding exactly the same taxable income. And then we work through those, those thresholds that we mentioned in the previous slides. So the first chunk is taxed at 19%, the next at 20 the next at 21 And finally, the last chunk is taxed at 42%, yielding a tax liability in Scotland of £13,238.48. Got to remember the pence now i've just kept it really simple okay keep it simple you get your gross salary deduct your personal allowance and then start working through the bands and the tax rates so as i say in the most of the uk it's 20 percent and then 40 percent in scotland or that's why then 45 percent in scotland you've got 19 percent 20 percent 21 percent 42 percent and 47 percent so you just work for it until you get your tax liability and this works this works monthly as well now you can just divide everything here by 12 to work out your monthly tax bill okay so what about a few other bits and pieces okay now i'm just going to look at the um how it works in england wales and northern ireland here it works exactly the same in scotland but it's just a little bit more work a little bit messier so i just kept it clean and just looked at the non-scottish part of the uk um what what about what do you do about your pension okay and bear in mind by the way i'm just showing you how to do this i'm not expecting you to do it and your payroll department will work this out for you but, but i'm just trying to let you know how it works interest empowerment whatever you want to call it if you get your nhs pension um then that is very that is tax deductible okay and it will automatically be worked out for you and automatically be tax deduct you know made tax deductible for you because what the what your payroll company will do is they will take your gross salary let's say sixty thousand pounds they will get they will deduct your pension contributions from from the get-go 
okay that will get your um taxable income basically the amount you'll be taxed on less of course your personal allowance as well so in this case if i've got a 12.5 percent in that tier for the pension i will then pay seven thousand five hundred pounds into the pension which is deducted from my gross salary okay as well as my personal allowance so my taxable income is 39,930 so it's much lower than it was previously if i go back our taxable income was 47,430 it's now 39,930 and correspondingly our tax liability is lower as well at 8,432 what if we pay into the nhs pension and also incur some employment expenses let's say for a nice easy number let's say i I pay into the GMC and I also pay into the Royal College uh, and it magically comes to £1,000. Okay, again, you take your gross salary of £60,000, you take off your pension contributions, which at 12.5% will be £7,500, and you can claim that £1,000 £1, of expo employment expenses as well. Take off your personal allowance as well, £12,570, and you get your taxable income of £38,000. 930 pounds and then you can see we do exactly the same thing you start off with the first 37,700 and you tax that at 20% and of course if your taxable income is lower than 37,700 pounds you take that amount and times 20% to get your tax liability you won't have to work out your 40% liability but in this case our person has a taxable income which is slightly above 37,700 so that remaining bit 1,230 pounds is taxed at 40 percent and lo and behold our tax liability comes down to 8,032 pounds whereas before in the example of in the previous example when we didn't have any deductions the tax liability was 11,432 pounds it's now 8,032 pounds that's all I'm going to say for now just a quick whistle stop tour about income tax um, don't forget to claim your allowable employment expenses if you haven't done so already. They're really valuable. You can see um, in this situation, £400 um, has been knocked off the tax liability because this person claimed £1,000 of employment expenses. And as healthcare professionals, we're constantly paying money to regulatory bodies for our indemnity insurance, royal colleges, the BMA and so on. And these are all tax deductible, as are any exams you incur under a training contract for one of the Royal Colleges. If you haven't claimed your allowable employment expenses and you want to know how and you want to do that, then we have a free guide um, at our, on our website, medicsmoney.co.uk. I'll put the link there for you guys. It's completely free, step by step, guides you through it, uh, and you can make that claim to reduce your tax bill. Anyway, I hope that was helpful, guys. I appreciate it was quite quite brief, um, but if you stick around. At some point, we're going to upload videos on your tax code uh, and also marginal tax rates as well. So until then, take care.